I found uh, I had a lot of trouble keeping the wheels in uh, when I was assembling, so I designed and printed a little 3D printed stand. You could make it out of anything. Uh, it's just designed to hold the little posts there at the corners and then at the corner without a post here. Uh, it's just flat and a little taller. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to do is put the posts on. And there's a short one. They all have a short end and a long end, or three of them have a short end and a long end. One has two short ends. That one with two short ends goes there. The long ends fit into the clock case. And the short end doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Now we just put the others in. Come on. So I decided the uh, easiest way for me, at least, is to um, use the front plate as the bottom for assembly. And you can tell it's the front because it has the little stock sticking out of it. And there's the side without anything in it. You can see how these little stand holds it really flat, which is important. And then the other plate's going to go on top like that. <clears throat> Before we get going, I need to clip these. So they don't get in the way. Okay. And you can see up here, I've laid out the parts in kind of order to help me put it all together. Away we go. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. Forks go, the pins go up on the fork. Uh, oops.
Okay. That's the time side. This gear, the escape for the alarm, is a real pain. It tends to jump out and fall sideways like that. I fall into that hole. But it turns out that hole is our friend. Come on. It's going to give us a way to keep this thing. Uh, no, I forgot which way this goes. Yeah, it goes this way. Yeah. Okay, and the anchor we're not going to put in until we get the front plate on a little bit. Okay. Okay, and like I said, the tricky one is this escape wheel. I'm sorry, it's it's not gonna be very visible, uh, but the um, the anchor goes up like this. I shouldn't have had any coffee yesterday. And it has a long end that goes through the the back plate like that. Sheet. Yeah, you can see that. That second wheel, the escape, came out. Sorry, this is hard to see. Okay, just hold that in there. Okay. Get it again. I keep forgetting. You have to make the anchor fit onto the escape wheel as you push it in. It doesn't just... So you have to kind of wiggle it. There we go. Come on. Unlucky. I could get this guy in back in where he belongs. Come on. <laughs> I haven't done with this with the springs before. Uh, this is going to be trickier than I thought. <laughs> Okay, got that. Got that. Now, there. I have those in. So now I can. Put on the nut. 
So just like uh, eight-day clocks, why we kind of work from the, or I find it easiest to work from the mainspring ends, the great wheel ends. Now I'm only using this, I'm only using this, these pliers because I think this post is a little stripped and so, okay. Now with that safely and I can, I can do the others, I can get the others in. So let's get over here, get that main wheel back in. Um, oh, right, this guy goes next. This guy. Can't really see that. I don't know. Get in there. Oh, okay, that's not ready yet. Some other pieces, though. Tough one. Oh, I see. This guy here needs to go in next. No, that's not holding him up. Oh, this guy again. No, that one. Ah, there we go. Come on, there. Good. This guy and this one. I thought it actually goes together pretty well once you get that second, um, once you get the escape wheel of the alarm in. There. I think that's everybody. So before I drop it, why I put these guys on? It's this kind of clock that convinced me that I don't want to work on watches because the parts are just a little smaller than a mantle clock. And uh, a bit too small for my fingers. Okay, do we really have it? I think so. Yeah, good. Okay, tighten these down. I'm done opening the plates. Okay. Oh, I should have mentioned at the very beginning that, um, sure, this is like a $7, $8 clock, uh, but uh, it's patterned, you know, it's a modern clock. It's patterned after older movements. So if you're working on a, a West clocks from the 30s or 40s or 50s, you might see some strong similarities here. Uh, I wanted to get a clock that I could practice uh, working on a balance wheel with. Okay, so now we're done with the stand. We need to oil a few things before I uh, put the motion works in. Very well. Doesn't count. Okay. 
Leave that one there. Okay. Now, oh, motion works in the alarm. Okay, this wheel has two little, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, this wheel has two little ridges on it, on the inside. And those fit into the notches on this. And that's what makes the alarm go off when these two align. See them move apart, maybe, and together. Click there. They move apart and together. There. Okay. So when assembling, I'm gonna keep try to keep these two things together. Um, you, you know, as opposed to spread apart, um, so that I know where the alarm is set to. Maybe I'm new at this. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this first. Yeah. And then we have the regular motion works here. Oops, not good to begin with. There. Okay, this guy goes between the two. Now, there are these two wheels that look really similar, except one of them has a little lip on the top. Don't think you can see. Oh, yeah, maybe you can see that. And the other one is flat on top. So the one that has a lip on top goes over here, and it's loose on its, on its post. And the one with no lip goes over here, and it presses onto its post. There. Probably gotta press that a little more. Oh, there. Okay. Now, we have the hardware to hold the alarm in. little thing. The washer. Oop. And a nut. Sometimes it doesn't have the washer. And I'm not sure how tight this is supposed to be. But it's a, you can see that this piece of metal works as a spring. Oh, maybe I just tighten it all the way. There we go. Good. Okay. Now, there's another little spring here. It's bent. It's supposed to be. It's bent in half. We want the bent center to be upward. And this goes over that. And where are my screwdrivers? And I didn't oil any of these nylon gears because they're nylon against nylon. They're kind of self-lubricating in a sense. Okay. Okay, I had to go look at a photo to make sure I got the order of these parts right. 
Um, there's this is the balance spring adjustment, the balance wheel adjustment. And so there's a there's a washer, a lever, a spring, and one of these two um, supports. And You can tell which side this goes on because there's a little hole for the point of this clip. So, the clip goes down, or this adjustment goes down, of course. I could use a stand at this point. This won't work very well. But at least it'll keep it steady. convinced. I need to be sure not to cross thread this thing. Screw. thread it again. There we go. I heard it click. <laughs> okay. So now get that little guy in there. to get that clip in there before I tighten it. Ah, shoot. In that hole. Oops. Oh. Okay, I managed to bend this little clip, um, which bends pretty easily, it turns out.
Come on. There, I felt it click into the threads. I'm going to try to bend this ring back a little bit so that it fits into the hole. Now, my understanding is that this is the, you know, both, both these screws adjust. This one is uh, adjust the tension on the fast slow control. I want that to be fairly stiff. Maybe even a little more. And then the other screw here is the adjusts the um, end shake of the balance wheel. Let's put that in. Just... There we go. Let's see how the balance wheel is doing here. Oops. Okay, one thing to notice that I didn't at first is that the balance wheel has a little plastic, in this case, pin sticking out of it, out of the center. And it's really easy to bend that pin when you're cleaning the parts by hand. So I'm just doing a test fit right now. Okay, that's pretty close. Come on. Because I need to put the um, hairspring back on the balance wheel. I want to thank OK Bridges, Oklahoma Bridges, for his excellent videos on adjusting hairsprings. This is very delicate. Okay. One side here, where is it? There it is. One side here has a little cup in it. Oh, let's see. It looks like it's that side. Yeah. It has a little bit of a chamfer. And the other side has kind of a notch. And the chamfer side goes to toward the yeah, toward the center of the balance wheel. mistake to do this right. Okay. 
Okay. Mistake. It's not too big. Oops. Okay, well, let's do this the right way, shall we? Right side up. Okay. So I'm putting the Let's see, let's find a hole that's just, oops, just the size of the center of the hairspring. Double check that I've got the beveled side up. And then I'm going to put this on here so I don't make a mistake. There we go. I'm just pushing it with my fingers. And you can check here about the height of that spring. Make sure it's high enough to go through that slot, or low enough to go through that slot. And really, I want it to line up with that hole. It's so delicate. I don't want to bend it. I think it could go in a little bit more. Just a touch. I'm also kind of comparing it to the um, photo I took before I disassembled the clock before I disassembled, before I took the hairspring off the balance wheel. Ah, so, I think that's in. Now we get to put it into place. Where's the end? Okay, there's the end. I wonder how to get that end into the slot. Oops, the other end fell out. Okay. Come on. Nope, not in. Okay, it's in with a tiny amount of end shake. Next, I get to tease the end of the hairspring through this slot right here. I wonder how I'm going to do that. My screwdrivers are magnetized. It's probably a bad idea. Toothpick.
Good. That's through. Now I need to tease the end into this hole here. Okay, great. Hmm, okay. Now we get to adjust it. So it's time to, well, first I need to peg that in place. Remember I saved the little tapered pin. There it is. And I don't want to shove this in. I just want to hold the spring in place for now. Uh, I don't really know if this is, well, this isn't the right place yet for the hairspring. Okay. Now that the balance wheel is in, I can wind the springs. Well, I can wind the main spring. and take its clamp off. Okay, that's loose now, so I can cut the clamp off. And that should be ticking. The fact that it isn't, oh, tells me I've got the, oh, balance. I've got the fork in the wrong position. I wonder if I can move this. Okay, so recap the, the little pin on the balance wheel is needs to be in the middle of the fork and instead it's on the outside so what i what i believe i need to do is loosen this screw take the balance wheel out and then put it back in place leaving the hairspring in so this could be kind of tricky This could be quite tricky. <laughs> I don't know if you can see any of this. Probably not. Okay. 
Okay, the wheel's out. Now I can put the pin in the middle of the fork. Now I need to put the balance wheel back in place. Tiny bit of end shake. Okay, at least the there we go. So the balance wheel's in the right place now. But there's two things I need to adjust. One is the beat. As you can see, if it's out of beat, it stops pretty quickly very quickly. Oh, it also might be a little too tight. Hmm. Okay. So you can see when it's at rest, well, I don't know if you can see, when the, when the balance wheel is at rest, it should be pointing the, that pin on the balance wheel should be pointing straight down the fork but instead it's over here and i learned from okay bridges videos that the way to adjust that is that the um, collet uh, the center part of the hairspring has a little slot in it that you can push with the screwdriver <laughs> In theory, it's also very small. So I can see the collet is over on this side here. So I wonder if I can do this with a toothpick so I don't have to worry about magnetic screwdrivers. Come on, where's that hole? Where is that small? Oh, there it is. Nope, I need a jeweler screwdriver. So, probably gonna magnetize this a little bit, which is a really bad idea. But this is why I'm practicing on a $7 clock instead of a several hundred dollar clock. Okay, that's at rest. And what I need to do is Jam that there. Okay, I moved it a little bit too far. Oops, sorry. Um, there it is. Okay. So what I need to do is get the screwdriver in that slot, and then I can move the balance wheel all I want. Now when it's at rest, you can see the pin is right in the middle of the fork. So, oh, <laughs> would help if I oiled that, wouldn't it? That's a little better. It still stops. Mm. Huh. 
huh. I wonder why. Oh, for one thing, I see that the uh, escape wheel isn't moving when the fork goes back and forth. That's bad. I found the problem, why there's no power to the uh, escape wheel, and it's that I was thinking, I was imagining that I didn't have to take the spring off of the alarm side because, you know, I just didn't need to mess with that yet. But it turns out that spring, that clamp, I should say, not spring, that clamp is in the way of the alarm side gears. So now that I've loosened that, I can cut it off. That ought to work better. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, great. Uh, the, oh, good. Whew. The uh, pin holding the hairspring came out. So there's no power to the balance wheel. How bad is this? Let's see. Oh, it's come all the way out of the adjustment, too. So where is the... So I get to do this again. Have to tease the um, hairspring into the adjustment slot here. Oh. I don't know how watchmakers have the patience to do this. Yeah, it's in. Good. Okay, now... Now I need to tease the end of the hairspring into the hole. There it is. Then put the peg in the hole. Pin in the hole, I should say. The tapered pin. Okay, and this time I am going to clamp it in a little bit. Just to keep it in. Okay. And once again, of course, the... Nope, nope. I was going to say once again the pin is outside the fork, but the problem is the, the thing is just... Uh, out of beat again, which is fine, because we know how to adjust that. Uh, where's the slot? Oh, 
slots way back over there. Hmm. Um, what do I need to do again? Turn that way. Okay. Let's find that slot again. Maybe. There it is. That's right, I did have to use a screwdriver. Mm, a little more. Okay, that's much better. At least now it's ticking. Ooh, that's much better. Okay, now one thing you can see is that the hairspring looks is kind of conical instead of flat, and I think that's because of the way I jammed it over here. So I need to fix that. I need to take the pin out again and press it in again, I think. Or I could say, gee, that's good enough. Oh, never that. Okay. Okay. Let's go and just relax. It's way out of beat. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Way out of beat. Okay. Um, so let's put it back in beat. Once more. There's the slot. There's the slot. A little more on the slot. Still needs to go a little more. Okay. Oh, that's a much more even beat. Okay, now I get to adjust the um, period, the time. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to record it. Uh, I'm going to record the TikTok and then uh, see how that period, one TikTok period, compares to uh, the ideal time of a period that I calculated from counting all the gear teeth. This is good that it's uh, ticking away. I studied the uh, balance wheel a little bit to figure out what was going wrong, and uh, there were a couple things, but they were all the result of uh, just 
having captured too much of the hairspring uh, in this little pinhole here. So the idea is, you know, when you mount the balance wheel, well, you slip the end of the hairspring through the little slot in the regulator, and then slip the end of the hairspring into this hole, and then uh, hold it there with a tapered pin. <clears throat> When I measured the period of the balance wheel, why well, I found it was way too short, which meant that I had too much. I had too little spring, too little hairspring. I had captured too much of it uh, in this hole. So what I did is I pulled the peg out and uh, rotated the, the balance wheel so that only a little bit of the hairspring is left inside the spot here. I don't think you can see it. I can't really see it myself. I'll try. Uh, no. Ah, there you go. You can just see the end. All right. No, that's the end of the peg. Never mind. Oh, well, you'll just have to trust me that there's not a lot of uh, hairspring uh, protruding below that pinhole. And doing that actually did a couple of things. First of all, it changed the uh, period of the balance wheel to something a lot closer to the 0.6 seconds uh, that I calculated it should have to keep good time. <clears throat> That's one thing it did. Another thing it did is it gave enough spring so that the hairspring wasn't bunched up. And then a third thing a third result of uh, giving that hairspring more uh, spring, more, more spring to work with, is that the balance wheel now has a throw of much larger than 180 degrees. So if I hold it up here, you can, oh, there we go. You can see that it's actually larger than 360 degrees. Let me see if I can stop it when it's done. There we go. You can see it start getting going. Now it's, yeah, 270 degrees, much better than 180. So it's, it's doing well. It's got good energy. There, it's almost 360. Okay. So now we can move on to finishing the assembly of the clock. <laughs>